Okay, today I'm going to be talking about not only how to most efficiently fly your ornithopter, but we're also going to be myth busting some horseshit that people have been throwing around because after a few quick searches a lot of people have no clue what the fuck they're talking about like for example a lot of people think that when you idle on the ground that does nothing to your ornithopter that's wrong that not only consumes fuel but also durability why does flying efficiently matter because in this game dune has decided to take the route of permanent durability reduction if you've ever played a survival game you're pretty used to when you use an item it loses its durability and you either get a new one later or you repair it in this case they've done both you can repair it but as you repair things in this game they start to lose maximum durability so as you repair things more and more over time eventually there will come a point where it breaks if you're a new player who just got your first ornithopter probably been bled dry because the ornithopter as a newer player is fucking expensive later on it's not a big deal to get the materials but when you're first starting out you're probably going to be stressing how best to use the ornithopter in a way that won't have you replacing all the parts with super expensive of aluminum. As such, in order to talk about how to most efficiently fly our vehicle, we need to talk about the myth busting leading up to it. So obviously, as we just discussed, idling in your ornithopter does consume fuel, though not as much as flying, and then it does consume durability. However, the durability it consumes is the exact same as if you were flying. So all the tests, just to clarify real quick, all the tests that I did were done with a Mark IV ornithopter in five minute intervals. Ooh. And each test was done three different times. So it's not just uh, maybe Maybe something was funky here we did definitively see these results so when it comes to idling while connected to the ground your wings over five minutes will lose three percent durability your engine will lose three percent durability your generator on average will lose around 1.5 percent durability and your fuel will drop eight percent when idle hovering and when i say idle hovering i just mean that you're still flying but you're not actively moving in any directions you're just sitting there above the ground in the air in the case of an idle hover we still see the wings and engine drop three percent generator at a 1.5, but this time instead of the fuel being an 8% loss over 5 minutes, the fuel is a 25% loss over 5 minutes. So a 17% increase in fuel loss. The next two tests I did were just moving straight up and down for 5 minutes while in the air, and then back and forth for 5 minutes. In both cases, we saw 25% fuel loss with the exact same durability loss in either case. The next one, kind of like idling on the ground, is probably going to surprise quite a few of you, but gliding does actually reduce the durability on your wing in the exact same amount as flying regularly. However, the difference between flying regularly is obviously since your engine isn't on. Your engine isn't being consumed when it comes to the durability, and your generator isn't on either, so your generator stays at a 0% loss. On my testing, I did see a like 1% fuel loss in all of my tests, but that's likely just because I have to take off and land still, since it's basically impossible to measure what I'm trying to measure without also including the takeoff and the landing. The best I could do, though, was just try and make it so that take off and landing were as short as possible. So in the end, gliding doesn't take fuel consumption or engine and generator durability loss. However, it will still impact your wing durability. Next up though is booster gliding and booster gliding it is hands down the best way to traverse anywhere on this map. Gliding will obviously reduce the wings by 3% because it's a booster glide. The engine stays at 0%. The generator does get consumed at around the 1.5% average, but that's because the booster uses power and then the booster still uses fuel as well. That's a common misconception that they don't use fuel, but they do. But that is at a 9% loss instead of the 25% loss of a straight flying for five minutes. And then the thruster only loses 2%. Now someone's probably going to pop in and say, Vash, that's not a fair comparison because you're assuming that the fuel consumption of a booster, which isn't on all the time, is fair to compare against the fuel consumption of constant flight for five minutes. And you'd be correct for once. That isn't a fair comparison. The comparison of booster gliding versus standard gliding versus versus standard flight isn't fair because the comparisons I've done were over a window of time, but they don't actually measure how far you've gone. If we were to measure the distance traveled between straight up regular flight with no gliding, gliding flight, and then booster gliding flight, booster gliding would probably be at least three times the distance of any other. Not only getting to be better fuel efficiency in the same time period, but better cost effectiveness because you'll travel farther, use less durability, which means you're going to need to repair your ornithopter way later than you normally would. So please, please, please keep these two points in mind. The first of which is that if you don't need to be in your vehicle, get out. If you're sitting there in your ornithopter,
ornithopter, watching your friend clear out an outpost while you sit wasting away in the ornithopter like the fat fuck you are, not only are you being wasted, but your ornithopter is being wasted. And if your ornithopter is being wasted, you are throwing away materials for every second you sit in there. And the second key takeaway is never ever use your engines unless you are taking off or landing. And when faced between the choice of storage or the thruster on your ornithopter, take the fucking thruster. It's not even close. Now that myth busting general data is out of the way, let's talk about general flight basics for people who are brand new to this, don't want to fuck up, which is completely understandable, frankly. Take off just using whatever you use to jump, and then if you ever want to descend, you can just use whatever you use to crouch. However, uh, ascent and descent are not necessarily limited to whatever your jump and crouch keys are, because if you're pressing forward, giving directional input, if you aim upward while pressing forward, you'll still move forward, but you'll also move up. And same goes for aiming down. Obviously, left and right, pretty fucking obvious. The most important controls are the vulture controls. And once you get up high enough, I prefer to ascend to maybe 500 meters, and then I completely turn off the engine for the rest of my flight. Because now I can glide. And that line out there, by the way, that I'm dipping up and down on is the horizon line. That just means that is your flat, even line. You don't want to aim at that when you're gliding. Because if you're aiming at that, you're not actually aiming down and you're not going to be gaining speed. And as you lose speed, you'll start to drop out of the sky faster. So you do want to aim down just a little bit to the point that you can see your speed going up. Once you're getting too low, now obviously I need to start climbing here. I don't need to kick on my engine and kill my speed. Instead, I can turn on my thruster, and instead of dropping to the measly like 60 fucking kilometers an hour that you would have gotten if you'd kicked on your engine, I am instead climbing at 140 kilometers an hour. Now my temp is climbing over on the top right there, so I can turn off my thruster so I don't max out on temp, and then just aim down again. Now I've gained 150 meters in altitude while still picking up speed as I descend. Now that one thrust is going to take me from my base clear over here because I got up here and then I descended and then I dropped and then I climbed again, and that's gonna take me over to the edge of the fucking map. So when done properly, one single altitude climb using thrusters will allow you to traverse the entire span of the fucking map. Like, it's not even close. Never use your engine for this shit. The other important thing to talk about, though, is when you are gliding, a lot of people try to just, without any directional input, they'll use, like, their mouse, or I guess joystick, I don't know, to try and turn or do uh, finer maneuvers. Please don't. If you've ever played any flying games, if when you're gliding, it's best to just pivot. Like, if I need to turn right, I'll just dip my vehicle all the way here, and then I'll use my key to turn up and just get going. And I still don't have to turn on my engine in order to turn or flip around quickly. I can just dip to the side and then force my nose up. So you don't have to worry about any crazy shit there. And then I guess that's kind of it. Real quick, we'll just talk about landing. You have a lot of leeway. Like you probably think I'm gonna crash right there, but nope. If you kick on your engine, you have probably 10 meters of slowdown before the engine will completely stop you at just about any speed. You have such a huge fucking grace window to turn on your engine to slow down and stop. When you do land though, uh, I'm actually curious. We'll test for shits. If I slam myself down, does that damage anything as my voice cracks? No. Okay. So literally just descend. Your landing gear will pop out automatically. And again, remember, do not idle in this position. If you don't need to be in the fucking ornithopter, get out. That has been all. I hope this helps you fly farther and significantly fucking faster using less fuel and less materials. Have a good day.